today's video, as you can see by the title, is about forgiveness. We are going to be talking on the subject that a lot of us have misconstrued. I know for myself, I didn't fully understand what forgiveness meant, why we had to do it, why it was important, until until it made sense to me and really and truly forgiveness was the gateway to God for me um, and I'll share a little bit of my story later on. So as you can see by the title of this video, Forgiveness and God's Nature. So if you guys see me looking over here, I have my laptop because I have notes. So we organized over here, okay? So, so I want to talk about forgiveness and how forgiveness can actually show us a bit of who God is and what his true nature is. I think a lot of us have God's nature misconstrued. A lot of us grew up maybe in church or maybe outside of church and had the idea of God as being this guy in the sky or this spirit in the sky that was waiting for us to mess up, to condemn us, and to maybe send us to the fires of hell, right? I know growing up for me, that's kind of sort of how I viewed God was just like this big guy in the sky that was waiting for me to mess up and so I didn't understand his goodness. I didn't understand his love and his graceful nature until I learned about forgiveness. So and how I really came to understand that you know who God was was through forgiveness. So I'll take you guys back to 17 year old Abby high school Abby she was she was a wild she was a wild child you know what I'm saying she was out there doing whatever she was doing she was a bit of a rebel she didn't like rules she didn't like anyone telling her what to do she was curious very very curious and wanted to live life to its fullest and I remember being 17 and I always grew up with like I always grew up in a Christian household like my family's Christian my family's I wouldn't say they're super religious, but my family is, like, God is, has always been at the center. And, like, my mom would teach me about God and read Bible stories to me and my siblings from young. So I always had God, but I never fully understood who God was or I didn't have a personal relationship with God. I knew who God was, but the relationship wasn't solidified. And it wasn't solidified because I had a lot of questions and I had a, a lot of uncertainty and I didn't fully understand. And the way that you know, God or Christianity was taught to me wasn't answering the questions. I wasn't, something wasn't clicking. I didn't, I didn't get it. You know what I mean? And so I remember being 17 and I did something that was against, you know, against what God would have wanted for me. In my mind, I messed up. You know what I'm saying? I messed up bad. In my 17 year old mind, I was like, oh, I'm going to hell. Like, this is it for me, dude. See y'all on the flip side or not, because I'm going to hell. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, I remember that whole situation happened. And I used to work at a restaurant. And across the street from the restaurant was an indigo. And sometimes I would just go to the indigo to pass time before my shift. And so this one time I'm sitting in indigo and I find this this book that had like scripture so it had like subheadings do I have it yes look here it is this is like it's like this little red book and it has subheadings so it'll talk about like affection acceptance forgiveness was one of them and then it would um list like scripture that kind of related to the topic and I remember flipping through this book it's so crazy it was literally this book like can you imagine I was sitting on this indigo floor flipping through this exact book and I remember seeing forgiveness and I was like ugh, ugh, forgiveness Pfft. like as if forgiveness I knew in my heart that you know there was something calling me to forgive us like I needed to forgive this person that had done me really dirty like when I tell you guys he, this person did me dirty they did me dirty bad okay and I was like I knew in my heart I was like Okay, I, I know I should forgive, but I, the second I saw the word forgiveness, I was like, Psh. forgive? Ugh, whatever, let's see what it has to say. <laughs> you know, like kind of like stubborn, but you know what you have to do. So I remember reading through forgiveness and no joke, like I'm not even trying to be dramatic or like sell the story. I literally remember reading this verse and I'm going to go through the verses that I read, but I remember reading the verse and I literally like sunk into the ground like not literally but like 
felt like I was sinking into the ground because my entire perspective and my entire worldview was shifting in that moment. In that moment, I said, oh, God is not this evil God. God is so loving. God is love. Like the essence of love of what love is, is God, right? And I just remember like light bulb going off. I said, oh, it's bigger than me. Oh, life is bigger than me. Forgiveness? What? Anyways, so let's get into it because that that was really the the stepping stone or the gateway to my relationship with God. From there, my relationship started with God, you know? My personal relationship with God started where I was like, okay, there's so much more to life. Okay, there's so much more that I don't fully understand. And when I do understand it, it's going to make life so clear. It's going to make everything easy. Or not easy, but it's going to make... It's going gonna, it's gonna to calm everything. Life is going to... I'm going to be... I'm going to start looking at life different because I just read this verse and my entire worldview shifted. So I want to talk about why do we forgive, right? Like that's the first question. Why is it important for us to forgive? And I want to read this verse here, Matthew 6, 14 to 15. And this was the verse, I'm pretty sure this was the the first verse that I read that where I was like sinking into the ground. All of these verses were what I read, but I'm pretty sure this was the first one. And so it goes, if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive others their sins your father will not forgive you your sins right and so in this verse we can see that the prerequisite the prerequisite to being forgiven is to forgive like the same grace that i'm asking god to have on me i need to also lend that grace to someone else right and why that completely shifted my worldview because i was during this phase of my life, I was, I, I thought I messed up really bad. You know what I'm saying? I thought I was going to hell and I was like, God, please, like, just forgive me. Like, I know I messed up. I'm suffering the consequences for it because there's so much emotional damage that I'm feeling and that I'm like going through and like this sadness and all these emotions that I'm carrying with me. I know it's a result of what I did, but please have mercy on me, have grace on me and forgive me, right? Like that same grace that I'm asking and desperately wanting from God, I gotta be able to give it to someone else. Like that's the prerequisite, right? In order for me to be forgiven, I gotta forgive this person that did me dirty. And I think a lot of us get stuck on the idea of, well, they don't deserve my forgiveness. They don't deserve my forgiveness because they did me really dirty and they really hurt me. I, when we mess up and when we do wrong, we don't deserve God's forgiveness. I didn't deserve God's forgiveness. You know what I mean? I was sitting there asking for his forgiveness, but did I deserve it? The same way that the same way that people hurt us when they do us dirty is the same way that we hurt God when we step away from his word, right? Because that's what hurts God. When we step away from his word, when we step away from his plan, when we step away from the way that he created this life to be, right? That is painful to God. That is hurtful to God, right? And so I had inflicted the same pain on God. And I'm here asking, just have mercy on me, Lord, you know, right? And that person that did me dirty, you know, they're not asking for forgiveness. But I know that, you know, it's a call on me to be like, I release you from, you know, anything that you've done for me. And really, it's, it's doing yourself a favor because we don't want to carry that animosity. We don't want to carry that hate with us everywhere we go, right? Forgiveness is it's really our responsibility. It is, unfortunately. Sometimes we have to forgive people even if they didn't ask to be forgiven, right? Doesn't mean that they deserve it. Most of the times, they don't deserve it. But we got to lend that grace. We got to lend that same grace that we want and that, you know, we almost sometimes even expect from God. And so if we have that expectation from God, we also have to pass it over right and i think it's so beautiful that god has created this beautiful ecosystem that is so sustainable right and i'm not talking about the physical ecosystem the planet earth no this ecosystem of spreading love in that if you want to be loved by me i need you to love your brother and sister i need you to forgive your brother and sister if you're asking something for me guess what honey you got to give it to someone else because that's how we continue the cycle right it's a beautiful system and in that moment, you as you can see, like just when it all makes sense and it's like the picture is being painted, right? You can just imagine how 17-year-old me was like sitting on the floor just 
life was just making sense to me. And in that moment, you know, my heart position completely changed. I said, oh, man, it's bigger. It's bigger. Um, and so I guess that kind of leans over into my second question or second thing that I want to talk on, that I want to touch on is the relationship between faith and forgiveness, right? Oftentimes when we talk about forgiveness, the topic of revenge comes up. Is revenge necessary, right? We talked about, okay, they don't deserve the forgiveness, but we understand that, okay, they don't deserve it, but we lend our grace the same way that God has lended the grace to us. Okay, now what about when revenge comes into it? Right? Can we can we talk about our faith and forgiveness? Right? So I want to read this verse here, um, Matthew chapter eighteen, verse twenty one to twenty two. That goes. Um, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy times seven times. Right. And so Peter is coming to Jesus and asking him, okay, he's like to Jesus, okay, um, they done messed up one time and I forgave them, but how many chances am I going to keep giving them? Seven? And Jesus is like, no, not seven, 70 times seven. And I think when we read the Bible, we kind of, the Bible is so beautifully written. It's so beautifully written in that we can't take the Bible You can't always take it literally. Sometimes, you know, it's written kind of in metaphors. And so when Jesus says 70 times 7, it's not like we take up the calculator. 70 times 7, 490 times. Okay, well, one strike down, you got 489 to go. No, you know, that's not what Jesus meant. It's like 70 times 7, it's an endless amount. It is, you, you, you don't even count how many times, right? If someone comes to you and they're asking to be forgiven, guess what? You got to forgive them. There's no there's no limit on your forgiveness, right? And I think it just it just bounces back to that same idea. It's like us as human beings just think about yourself and how imperfect you are, right? Think about some vice that you have, something that you're trying to work through, right? During your journey of working through that, how many times do you slip up? How many times do you mess up, right? Do we serve a God that you know, is counting, well, you got three strikes. You know, this little vice that you have can't keep messing up. No, we serve a God that is so loving that he says, as long as you come back to me, I love you. As long as you come back to me, we rejoice, right? And that goes back to the story of the um, the prodigal son, right? Where we rejoice that you have come back. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get too much into that story, but if you know, read up on it, the prodigal son, right? God rejoices when we come back to him. And so the same thing goes for us, right? Like what I love about Jesus so much is that he is such a great um, role model, right? And Jesus is a reflection of God. And so we have to strive to have the heart of Jesus, to have the heart of God, right? And I think this verse clearly illustrates that in that it's like, there is no limit on your forgiveness. If someone asks to be forgiven, you forgive them. Sometimes they're not going to ask, but out of your own love for yourself and respect for yourself, you got to forgive them, right? Um, and so where does revenge come into this? Because I think a lot of times when, we, when we've been done dirty, we seek revenge. We're like, you made me feel this way. I'm about to make you feel the same way, if not worse, right? And I think that when we talk about revenge, we have to talk about faith. Because if we are seeking out revenge, what that means, really at its essence, is that we don't fully have faith in the just God, in the fair God, right? We don't have faith that God is just and that he is fair, right? Because if we really and truly believe that the God we serve is a just God and a faithful God and a trustworthy God, then there is no need for revenge, right? Because when someone does us dirty, it's not up to us to get back at them. It's not up to me to make sure you feel how I feel. No, God is going to take care of that. And it's not that God is going to go and strike that person. No, let's not even wish that on other people. You know what I mean? But God understands everything. When I think of God, I think of a bird's eye view in that he is seeing where I am in this situation and how, you know, my role played a part in the situation and he's seen the other person and how that person's life has played into this situation, right? 
And so we're in a situation where things are rocky and people are being hurt, but God understands and sees the history of this person, the history of this person, and how we both came into this situation, right? And so God is going to deal with the matters justly, right? Because unfortunately, as human beings, we don't get that bird's eye view. I can only see here, here, a little bit of, um, what is it? A little bit of, uh, you know what I'm talking about. The, the word that starts with P. A little bit of peripherals. I can only see rest in front of me and a little bit of peripherals, right? But God has the entire view. He sees it from bird's eye view. He sees the front, the back, the side. You know what I'm saying? Everything. And so it isn't up to us to seek revenge. We don't know. We don't know every moving piece. You know what I'm saying? God knows every moving piece and he deals with everything fairly, right? And so even when someone does us bad, we shouldn't even be waiting like, oh, what karma going to get them? Ooh, they going to see. Nah, man. You know what I'm saying? If we really believe in God, we're not even waiting for karma to get the people. Like, no, like God is going to deal with you justly. You know what I'm saying? Maybe God's going to give you a bit of grace because he knows what you've been through. You know what I'm saying? And that's okay. Like, we can't get upset at the fact that someone hurt us or someone did wrong and and wrong is not coming for them. That's not God. That's not the heart of God, right? And so when we find ourselves in those situations or when we find our heart in those positions, we really got to sit with ourselves and, you know, do a little bit of a heart check. Like, okay, wait a minute, because what is this rooted in, right? Because if I say that I love God, I shouldn't be feeling that way. You know what I'm saying? I should have trust and faith in the God that I serve, the God that is fair, right? And the same thing when the, when the coin is flipped on my end, I want God to have that same grace and mercy with me, right? So that's the thing with revenge is like, it is so short-sighted, it is so limited that it's not even worth it. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not worth it. Give it to God. When people do you dirty, it hurts. When people do you wrong, it hurts. But, you know, like Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Unfortunately, it's hard, but pray for your enemies. Wish them the best. Because at the end of the day, God's going to take care of everything, right? He's going to deal with it fairly. Anyways, so moving forward, we kind of touched on it before, but um, I want to talk about the cycles of hurt. I know that we have all heard the saying, hurt people hurt people. And I remember the first time... I heard this saying, I think it was in the movie um, Wallflower, Perks of Being a Wallflower. That was a really great movie. I remember loving it. I need to rewatch that movie. But Perks of Being a Wallflower, I'm pretty sure they talk about this. Hurt people hurt people and how it's a cycle, right? So you, I think it's important that we understand that what we spread is what within us. You spread what is within you, right? And so I want to I want to read this verse here. Um Luke 23:34 that says, "Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing." And Jesus had said this when he was being crucified. So, if we understand the story of crucifixion, right? Jesus was crucified under false pretenses. He was crucified for no reason. He did nothing wrong and he did not deserve the crucifixion that he received, right? The death penalty that he received was based off of people saying, oh, he thinks that he's a god. He's claiming to perform miracles and he's doing this and that and this. We need to get rid of him, right? And so the people said, He's claiming to be God and we keep telling him like stop saying that and he's not listening to us so we got to get rid of him. And so they crucified him, right? And as Jesus was being crucified, he says, he prays to, to, to God and says, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And I think we need to have that same attitude, right? When people hurt us, we need to have that same attitude that Jesus had. God Forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. Hurt people hurt people. What is within you is what you spread. If all you know is pain and suffering and hurt, the pain and suffering and hurt is normal to you. And so when you treat others with pain and suffering and hurt, it isn't that you are putting that on them. That is the norm for you, right? When people hurt us, when people are disrespectful to us, when people don't treat us in the way that we deserve to be treated, it's a cycle of hurt people being hurt, right? 
Sometimes we take it so personal. We take it so personal. Of course we should, right? And don't feel bad for taking it personal. I take things really personal sometimes, and then I have to sit with myself and be like, okay, Abby, it's bigger than you. Like, I know your feelings are hurt, and it's fair. Like, you can feel that, but it's bigger than you, right? People that know and understand love and are filled with love and kindness, they spread that. Their light can be felt. You know what I'm saying? People that understand what safety is they spread that they make sure everybody is good i don't have to like you i don't have to you know what i'm saying you don't have to be my friend but i understand what love is and i understand what safety is and so everybody is kept right but when someone doesn't come from that same understanding or when someone doesn't even know when someone is hurt when someone is broken right that is, that is the state that they are in. That is what they know. That is the norm to them. And so unfortunately, they are now going to pass that on. And sometimes we get caught in that crossfire, right? And so we need to have that same attitude as Jesus in that, okay, God, I know that they don't know what they're doing. I know that they don't even know how much pain that they have inflicted on me. But Lord, please forgive them because it's a lot of pain and it's a lot of suffering that I'm enduring now. You know what I'm saying? We need to have that same attitude. We need to have that same understanding. And I know it's kind of taking the position of being a martyr, right? Where we're like, like I always got to be the bigger person type of thing, right? But sometimes, man, life is bigger than us. Life is so much bigger than us. And when we understand the cycle of hurt people hurt people, we can understand that we don't fight hurt with hurt. We fight hurt we fight pain, we fight suffering with love, right? That's the only thing that can heal hurt. That's the only thing that can heal pain is love, right? And that ties right back into revenge. That's why we don't spread revenge. That's why we don't get even. Because what does it do? The saying, I think Janae Aiko said this, you cannot fight fire with fire, an eye for an eye leaves everyone blind. I don't know if that's her line, but she said it in one of her songs. You cannot fight fire with fire. An eye for an eye leaves everyone blind. No, I'm not trying to preach to the choir. Something, something. I don't know, but it's true. It's true. You cannot fight fire with fire. An eye for an eye will leave everyone blind. And so what do we do? We fight fire with love. We fight fire with kindness. Sometimes we fight fire with silence. Sometimes we fight fire by turning the other cheek. You know what I'm saying? And so that's really what the message is. The message about forgiveness. I hope we all kind of understand forgiveness on a deeper level. Because it is so much more than what we think it is. I think sometimes we think of forgiveness, like I said, like being a martyr. Like if we forgive, we're kind of like the... We are like the weak one, you know? We're the weak one, but it's like... Think about how much work it takes to forgive someone. Think about... Oftentimes, being nice is harder than being mean, right? Doing the right thing is so much harder than doing the wrong thing. Just... Doing right is so much harder than doing the right thing in anything in life. In anything, in anything, anything in life, okay? Doing right... Doing what is good is always harder than what is than doing something bad. Doing something that you're not supposed to do, right? And so we have to change that mindset of like, if you forgive, you're the weak one. Nah, man. It takes so much more work for me to forgive than for me to just seek revenge. Revenge is easy and trust me, it feels good. It feels real good, right? But to forgive, you don't get anything from that. You don't get anything from it. Other than a peace of mind, which comes later. But in that moment, it doesn't feel good. But give it, a, give it a couple days, give it a week, give it some months. You are at peace, at total ease, peace of mind, right? I gave it to God. He's going to deal with the matters. You know what I mean? So anyways, I hope that this discussion, this talk really illustrated forgiveness in the way that shows us God's nature, right? So key things that we need to remember in order for us to be forgiven, right? Because we're all sinners and we've all done dirty, horrible things that we need to be forgiven, right? 
we're not perfect. In order for us to be given that same grace from God, we got to lend that grace, right? And that just shows us the nature of God is that he is a kind, loving God, right? He tells us there is no number on the grace that you can receive. It is endless. The mercy that I spread for you is endless. As long as you keep coming back to me, you are my child, right? He's a kind and loving God. He's a very, very kind and loving God. And I think the last thing that we should and must need to remember is that hurt people hurt people. When someone hurts you, it is not coming from a loving place. It is coming from the brokenness within them. And so don't take it personal. Try not to take it personal, but just... Or take it personal because you got to work through your process, you know, do what you have to do. But at the end of it, understand, come to the understanding that hurt people hurt people. And in order to break that cycle, we got to sprinkle love on it. That's the only way to break the cycle is to sprinkle love on it. So yeah, that is it. That is all I have on forgiveness. I hope you guys enjoyed this style of video. I know it's definitely a lot longer, a lot chunkier, but I think certain topics need to be that way. I think certain topics, we really have to like dive into it and we really have to get to the essence. And sometimes that comes out through stories. Sometimes that comes out through sharing experiences. And sometimes it comes out through 30 minute videos of just sitting and talking and allowing things to free flow. So that was my hope for this video is that we got to understand forgiveness and God's true nature. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it with your friends or your family or anyone. Um, and I want to thank you guys for being here. I am so insanely grateful for this community that we're building. If you are from TikTok or Instagram or any of my socials, thank you so much for being here. Like you have no idea. You have no idea how thankful I am. I love each and every single one of you guys. You guys are so kind. The comments that you share on my TikTok are so encouraging and so kind. And so I hope that I can give back in this way, right? Like, these are your words of encouragement. And these are me. This is me sprinkling my love on you. Like, the same way that you guys sprinkle it through my comments. Like, here you go. I love you guys. Your comments brighten my day. Seriously, you know? So anyways, that's it for now. I'm going to stop rambling and I will see you guys in another video in another time. Um, love and life. Peace and love. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.